Well, in breast cancer screening, um, the radiologist is looking for a lesion in, in a breast of asymptomatic women, women who have no signs of, of cancer. And so it's a localization task. There's, they're starting with the whole image and looking for a suspect area. It's similar to looking for Waldo on Where's Waldo? You're looking for items that are red and white. That's computer-aided detection is using the computer to help you find areas that have red and white stripes. So for the past, since 1998, computer-aided detection for screening mammograms has been FDA approved. And m most mam screening mammograms in the U.S. do involve some kind of computer read as an aid to the radiologist. In those situations, the computer was a second reader. The radiologist was to look at the full image, make an assessment, when done, press a button, and if the computer thought there was a suspect area, it would indicate it. The radiologist then could incorporate that into his or her interpretation. Of course, not eliminating anything that the radiologist might have found. That's a second reader. Nowadays, in, in, in cancer screening, since half, roughly half the women have dense breasts, they need additional imaging beyond the screening mammogram. They may have 3D ultrasound, or they may have breast MRI. In those cases, we're dealing with 3D, maybe 4D image data, and that's a lot for a radiologist and will take much longer. So there, computer-aided detection is being applied to those as a concurrent reader. That is, when the radiologist goes to read the image, both the image and the computer result are shown. So they're working concurrently together. And We'll see how that works out. Um, and what it's been found is when they use computer-aided detection that way on those 3D images, their interpretation time reduces without a loss in their performance. So here the computer can help improve the efficiency of reading, which is needed because the radiologist is looking at these three-dimensional image sets, lots of data. And I just want to say that in screening, in detection, what the computer is doing is identifying suspect areas. It's not making a cancer versus benign decision. And in fact, the radiologist is actually not making a true cut cancer versus benign, but rather a recommendation based on their assessment of cancer. And working together, we hope to improve the performance of the radiologist and their efficiency in reading. Now in cancer diagnosis, once a woman, a patient has a lesion identified, either by a radiologist or a radiologist using computer-aided detection, the next question is, what is the likelihood that it's cancer? That is, let's go back to where's Waldo, what is the likelihood that those red and white stripes are actually Waldo and not a bucket that's painted red and white? So the computer here now is looking at that. Now, here, it's not a localization task, but a, a, a classification, a characterization task. And uh, investigators have looked at both human-engineered radiomic methods as well as deep learning methods. And in fact, it's been shown by a couple that when you merge both techniques, you actually do better in distinguishing cancers from benign lesions. Now, this has led to systems for a breast MRI as well as for um, breast ultrasound. Um, currently there's uh, one system FDA approved for breast MRI and one for breast ultrasound in helping in this classification task which would help in patient management down the road. We can use AI to extract characteristics of the tumor and then we can relate that to clinical data pathology data, histology data, genomic data, and see if there's a relationship. When we're doing this, we want to help radiologists improve their decision-making process on who should go for biopsy or not. Many radiologists may not need that help, others may need that help. But in addition to that, we can use this analysis as a virtual biopsy. We can pull out characteristics of the tumor and then use various association methods to relate it to the biology of the tumor. And we've done that. We worked with the NCI Breast Phenotype Mapping Group 
um, uh, from the TCGA and TCIA, and we've shown relationships between the uh, different pathways, cancer pathways, some related to tumor growth, and to the various radiomic features, specifically those related to size, irregularity in terms of shape, and also this heterogeneity of the uptake of the contrast agent. And we do that by you performing texture analysis on it. And we find that that heterogeneity of the uptake because of the angiogenesis going on in the, in the tumor, we can help classify malignant versus benign tumors, but also use it in assessing, assessing risk of recurrence.